Hello everyone, welcome back to Optimize Ebony. Uh, today I'm doing the fourth uh, installment of the Leveling Up Your Buffs series, uh, where I'm strictly talking about uh, leveling up your buffs for PvP specifically, and how to become a better member of your team uh, for Battlefields, SVS, you know, anything, I guess, in, ser in server SVS or in server uh, PvP, anything where you're you're actually using your your buffs and your knowledge of the game uh, to uh, outsmart your opponent. Uh, so today's episode is on spiritual beasts, spiritual beasts, and spiritual beast seals. So uh, originally there was uh, just a few spiritual beasts. And these are the, the OG ones, the Bird of Hurricane, Lord of Lava, Behemoth King, and uh, Thunder Scorpion. These are the ones that you could get for free, basically. You just had to you know get enough Spiritual Beast XP to unlock these uh, and level them up. You can level them up with, with just like uh, gems and metals and uh, gold. Uh, then they basically released all of these new... Uh, spiritual beasts, and they're continuing to add them. Uh, the the Chimera one just came out, uh, so I guess depending on when you're watching this video, you can kind of date it uh, by that. But uh, yeah, they seem to be releasing a new a new spiritual beast like once every month or once every month and a half or something like that. Uh, the good thing about the spiritual beast that they're that they're uh, that they're you know releasing is that they are fairly easy to get for free to play players right you can you can get a a spiritual beast from just the bosses that you're uh that you're killing in a day you can essentially get uh 40 i think 40 whatever fragments uh spiritual beast shards a day uh for example in this case uh this is the one that's going on right now you can get 40 of these per day and you know that means that in you basically need 10 days to get enough for uh the whatever spiritual beast you're you're looking to get or the new one and so typically you know if you're not overspending on the on the 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 specific you know shards and stuff to upgrade them uh you can unlock them free to play every time that they unlock uh, and they are super important to get when they when they release because of uh, mostly one thing the the debuff here so most of them will have four well they all have four attributes most of them will have three attributes that are buff based and then one that is debuff based and so uh the main usage for for spiritual beasts in the game today is actually in subs. It's not it's not actually using these on your your specific attacking generals or your wall general or anything like that, unless you have a very specific need uh, and you don't have a lot of dragons. Dragons are always per, almost always preferable. I would say always preferable to uh, to a spiritual beast. Mostly because you you get the flexibility of being able to refine the dragons. So even though, I mean, let's look at uh, let's look at the this one I have maxed. So this one gives you a lot of mount buffs, right? Fifty two of each one, and it also gives you some nice double double drop potential. Uh, but if you look at you know a a a dragon, you're getting depending on the level of the dragon you're you're getting a decent amount of buffs just from the level of the dragon and then you can refine it to get additional buffs and uh those are the buffs that you can you know very easily calculate the the very important buffs can also be the just general attributes that are uh applied to your general so you know these are uh just straight buffing your attack defense uh, politics and leadership for your general, which indirectly uh, affects your buffs uh, for and your wounded and uh, you know a whole bunch of things that are uh, that are very important in in the battle. And so, um, dragons are almost always uh, preferable. Uh, the other thing with dragons is obviously you have the talents. So 
the talents are going to give you additional buffs ahead of what a spiritual beast would would give you. So unless you don't have a dragon for this specific need, um, and you're kind of in the early stages of the game, I would suggest don't use these for for attacking marches. Put them in your subs um, and and use use them for for the debuffs uh, because a lot of them have have some decent debuffs. Um, and basically, you once you unlock them uh, with just the spiritual beast XP, you can get it to level ten, um, and then there's uh, like four levels of it. Uh, you know, just the gray. Uh, I think green, blue, there might be five levels of it, uh, basically all the way up to, to red. Red is the highest, and basically once you get it to red, you can make a massive jump on it because you can take it from level 10 to level 20. Uh, so that's that's a huge, huge benefit there. Um, but for debuffs, basically what you want to do is you want to get it to level 10 and you don't even really need to to smelt it or you know in, increase the the level of it uh and you can very you can pick which ones you actually want to smelt and level up and get those uh get those additional debuffs uh so just looking through these i mean they do have some decent buffs uh if you don't have a siege general or siege dragon uh maybe this one makes sense for a siege dragon um, you know, and there's some good debuffs that are not easy to get. Ground troop attack, not super easy to get. Range troop defense, that's okay. Mount troop defense, you know, it's good if you're attacking. Um, this one, I would say Siren is probably one that you actually want to focus a little bit on smelting because, uh, we can all use additional range troop attack debuffs, particularly as they're increasing the buff capacity of, of the game. You always need to try and find every little way that you can increase your debuffs to allow your yourself to last a little bit longer uh, while you're defending um, and, and stuff like that. So that's essentially the uh, the the very basics of spiritual beasts how to get them you know what what they should be used for again use them in subs uh the debuffs do count the buffs only will count for the troops that are fighting in that specific sub not overall for your for your troops um so that's and that's that's typically how how that works that's how sub gen gear and stuff like that works as well the debuffs count for everything the uh positive buffs only count for the specific uh, troops that are fighting for that general. So let's actually get into the more interesting part of the spiritual beast and how you can actually use them uh, to your advantage for buffs. Uh, and that is the spiritual beast seals. This is something that they released recently, or I guess a couple months ago, uh, and it basically allows you to use these, uh, these stones and gems to unlock these these specific seal attributes that that will level you know certain buffs uh, and all of them have have different ones uh, you can you can take a look at all of them even if you don't have the specific spiritual beast you can still take a look at them and you can see what the buffs are going to be uh, so for example i you know i just got the the chimera uh, and so i don't have these things unlocked but i can see what it is um, so you can see Basically, you you have you can see the level cap here. You can see that what the max attributes are, and then what your current level are is. So you can see that total for this specific one, uh, you can get a marching mount troop HP sixty four percent and march speed to monsters forty percent. Uh, not not going to read through all of these, um, but that's that's essentially how that works. And then as you level these up, so for example, this is level eight, um, it, it will feed into the total number of, of seals that are activated for this spiritual beast. So you can see level eight out of 10. Once you get to certain level thresholds, so for example, level 10 here, and pasture level 30, you will unlock this base stat, which is 
an additional in-city mount troop attack 10%. Uh, mount troop attack is maybe not the most important thing to buff, uh, but you know it is what it is. Uh, it's still better than nothing. Uh, the next one is uh, in-city range troop HP. Again, maybe not the most important thing to, to buff. Uh, but then this one is in-city siege machine defense. Okay, maybe maybe this beast isn't the best for for these, you know, kind of ascending, so to speak. Um, but some of the the base stats are are great. So, for example, at level eight of this one, I'm getting an additional marching, uh, additional twenty percent marching siege machine attack. And I'm really trying to to buff my siege march, particularly when I'm attacking. Uh, we we try and do a lot of siege rallies. Uh, and siege solos, you know, sometimes in, in SVS and stuff like that. Uh, so this is one that that's really important for me to, to to improve. So I would suggest basically taking a look at and seeing which ones are are the important ones for you. Uh, which one, which stats do you need to to improve the most? Um, so for example, if you're if you're joining rallies and your alliance does a lot of range rallies, maybe you want to focus on marching range troop attack, uh, or you know if they do a lot of siege rallies, marching siege attack. Um, there's also ones that are. Uh, let me look at some of them. There's also some that are in city siege HP. If you're getting you know attacked with siege a lot, maybe you want to to increase that. And um, there's also just general uh, general buffs here, like for example construction speed. So that's helpful to everyone. Uh, and then, you know, it's paired with also, I would say, a fairly useful stat, marching siege HP. So basically, I would say, look through these ones, find the ones that, that you want to target. It doesn't always have to mean that you're unlocking these, these different, these like kind of overall uh, meta attributes. It it helps if you are, but the 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 stats are also just important on their own. You know, uh, for example, I've unlocked a lot of these, and that's mostly because I'm I'm trying to to buff out the specific seal attributes. And this is one of the easier ways to to get buffs in in the game uh, at the lower levels. It does scale up quite aggressively. Uh, then the number of these of these you know gems that you need to well the gems that you need and also the stones that you need to to upgrade. And so. I would suggest even for like the 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 big ones that you're focusing on, if you're if you're not a big coiner, I I'm I'm kind of stopping around ten, even for the ones that I that I really want. So again, this one's marching siege attack. Uh, this is something that I really want to buff, uh, but it just starts to get very very expensive here, and so uh, I'm I'm stopping on this, working on some of the other things, getting you know rounding out my buffs a little bit, and then I will eventually go back and and add to these. Um, so. I pointed out kind of the two siege attack ones. Uh, there's also a number of ranged attack ones. This one's a ranged attack one. Um, I think there's also one on Pegasus. No, there's one more. Uh, okay, this one. There's there's an additional ranged troop attack one here. So if you get if you get both of these to to ten, that's an additional fifty percent. Uh, marching range troop attack that you get, which is a pretty significant deal. You know, if you're if you think about like how how long that would take for you to get that via like refining or or whatever, like that's you know it you can get the, you can bu get buffs a, a lot faster here than you can in a lot of other places. So uh, yeah, basically don't don't sleep on these things. Don't be afraid of them, but also come in with a plan. Uh, focus on the things that are that are going to be most beneficial to you and focus on take a look at the specific buffs down here to see if any of them match up with uh, with things that you that you actually want um, in addition to the specific attributes you know for example I, I really want this one uh, but let's look at you know these ones are these what I actually want uh, you know, in city range troop attack, that's not bad. In city ground troop defense, that one's not bad. Um, and yeah, a couple of them give you a, a fairly significant way to uh, buff, you know, 
mount troop HP defending, uh, range troop stats defending, things like that. Uh, so that's that's basically what I what I wanted to to talk about on this one. Uh, it's again, it's it's a fairly easy concept. Uh, it will just take time for you to to generate these. Uh, you can get a number of them per day, um, and uh, you know obviously they're also available in packs. Uh, and it 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 does get a little bit expensive with the with the gems, but it's it's really quite frankly not too bad, especially when you're looking at things like uh, like the dragon talent costs and stuff like that. So, uh, yep, basically don't sleep on these guys. This these can give you a fairly substantial buff boost um, if you're doing it correctly. That's all I have for you guys today. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, and as always, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, and particularly if you're brand new to the channel, I am doing this series, particularly targeting uh, improving your buffs that uh, you might want to uh, subscribe to get notifications for the next episodes for. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.